Hi, I'm Jeff Miller. And I'm Anthony Navarro. And welcome to Talk Out Loud, where LGBTQIA plus people proudly share their stories. We're excited to launch Proud Out Loud, which is a limited Pride Month series brought to you by the team at Talk Out Loud in partnership with Tybar. On this episode, we're here with Mac Beggs. You may know Mac from when he won the Texas State Women's Wrestling Championship in 2017 and 18 as a transgender man. Just in time for Pride Month, Changing the Game, the Hulu original documentary, debuts following Mac and three other high school transgender athletes, all at different stages of their athletic seasons, personal lives, and their unique paths as transgender teens. Today, Mac shares about his personal spiritual journey since high school in self-acceptance, learning noble universal life truths, and healthy boundaries. We also learn why he was inspired to change majors in college from exercise science to psychology, focusing on human development and social change in the world. Let's hear Mac's story. Well, we are really, really excited for an opportunity to sit down virtually with <laughs> Mac Beggs this morning. Mac, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm doing so good. I just cut it up a watermelon and I felt like Samurai Jack going at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I got like training tonight at like 6.30 all the way to 8.30. And then it's like, you know, the downtime right afterwards and then stretching and school stuff. Oh, the same old, same old college student stuff. <laughs> so, so you're in what, what year, year of college are you in right now? And technically, I'm supposed to be a senior, but technically, I'm a junior. I started my bachelor's out as exercise science and um, realized the science classes were not for me. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of <laughs> there's like a lot of math, and I was like, oh. Why did I think this was going to work out in college when it didn't work out in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> so um, I figured, honestly, I should have just done this right off on the bat. I did psychology. Hmm. And I don't know why I didn't click in my head when I was like, are you doing all this stuff? Anyway, I was like, this really lines up more with what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm particularly uh, majoring in arts of human development and social change. Hmm. And so I'm really, really loving it. It's really nice really gets in depth into just all aspects of the just the brain and just how the world works how it should work and how social institutions are you know being uh, marginalized not being marginalized mm-hmm. in our society so yeah it's it's awesome oh that's that's really good that's that's exciting i want to go, kind of go back in time for a little bit if, if that's all right with you yeah of course you you grew up in in, in texas right yeah uh, a little small town called Ulysses, right smack dab between dallas and fort worth um, everybody calls us useless because that's how everyone <laughs> pronounces it when they see it. <laughs> it's it's terrible, but like we we're, we're awesome. It's a small town, small community. A lot of the uh, Tongans, Asians, um, Hispanic community. It's it's very really diverse, mm. and I love it. Uh, the Trinity High School is where I came out of. The super great community. I would say probably the high school has a little bit more to work on when it talks about its diversity, but. For the most part, like uh, geographic wise, it's very diverse. So what uh, what was family life like? Do you have any siblings? Yeah, I got a little sister. <laughs> she uh, she's awesome. Uh, I just she just had her little baby, uh, her, my little niece. Uh, gosh, she's growing up with me so fast, man. Like every time I see pictures, I cry. Aww. Like family is really important to me. And yeah. to my family as well. What was, so uh, thinking back uh, about growing up, what are some like really great memories you have of your family growing up? Uh, I would say like, honestly, they're like kind of cynical in a way. Like one time from, I, I got this scar on my head and we were at a family timeout in, um, in Denton, Texas, right? My, we were playing golf. It was me and a couple of my cousins. And I was trying to teach him how to play golf, right? I stand up behind him and he swings his club all the way back. I'm thinking that I'm, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> he clipped me with the club and I oh was gosh. like, oh my God. <laughs> and, and then like my mom was freaking out. She was like, oh my God, like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then she was like, you're going to have to get stitches. And that's what I cried about. Like I didn't even cry about the fact that I got club in the head. I got cried because I was going to have to have stitches in my head. 
it was terrible, man. <laughs> but it was like, I look back on it and I'm just like, man, you're, you're such a dumb kid. And I, I like moments like that. And um, I have instances where like family time, like, like at holidays, yeah. um, I remember like hanging out with like my dad's side of the family, like in my uh, Nana and Tata's house, like, you know, just drinking, having a grand old time. <laughs> and just like just watching the game, Dallas Cowboys game versus the Redskins. And, you know, like, <laughs> I love, I love memories like those. Yeah. So- I cherish them. My family is really spread out like over texas so then they work a lot and it's all it's all different times but we all try to get together as best we can mm. did was there anyone in your family like was there anyone that had played sports or that you looked up to or you that kind of encouraged you or where you saw like oh maybe I, i'm gonna do this my i knew my dad was like you know a big soccer player back in his days he, he's all he's really all talk though like he, <laughs> he really was good but <laughs> he, he's a really big talker and he's really really big people guy but uh, my grandfather would always show up to uh, like my extracurricular activities, like my my band stuff. I played the clarinet. Like I did everything, guys. Like no one That's knows great. I did freaking everything. <laughs> I did like I did pole vault. I was a goalie. Played softball, t ball, and like I I think the fact that I knew that I was really the only. Um, oh well, my well wait, hold on a second. My mom was a dancer because I did dance for like five six years from when i was four to like 12 years old and then that's when i really started getting into sports more mm. was that the first thing that you were like kind of enrolled in for like a group activity for sports at the age of four yeah yeah it was like gymnastics hip hop um yeah <laughs> i don't dance that good anymore though <laughs> <laughs> did, did you was there anything that like, if you think you talk about like the, the hip-hop the dance, was there anything like that you out of like all the things you experienced in that that class was there one thing you're like oh this is what i like or, or anything that you kind of like i want more of this i really wanted to like be like one of the guy parts because there was there's this one kid named uh nash Traitry. i still know him to this day i went to high school with him junior high and and I, a couple of you know the dancers that i grew up with uh went to my high school but the i think what i couldn't understand was i was wasn't transitioned then so I had to play the female character. And so I had to be in like leotards and, you know, these girly things. And I had to do my makeup, like red lipstick, like gel in the hair. And I was like, oh, my God, get me out of this. Like, no, this is not it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's interesting. When did you gravitating towards this? Did you, did you have to be told, like, why you couldn't do this? Or, or was there any of that? Or was it just kind of one of those things that you're, was there a construct that you experienced with that at all? Or? I, I, I never understood. I never was really verbally expressed to like, though, this is why you can't do it. I was just told that I just had to do it. Mm. I mean, my mom kind of tried to shield me from it. We had a really like strong talk when I went back at home over the over um, in, in April. And she just kind of like let it word vomit over like a couple of beers we had together and just kind of like we just kind of had a hard to hard talk i was like so why all these years like you know up until like when i was in junior high you finally like i don't know kind of really saw me for who i was she was like i always saw you for who you were i just Mm. wasn't sure whether or not if you know if you were ready or if i was you know gonna put something on you that you know, was going to be pressing that you didn't understand, Mm. didn't want to steer you in the right direction. I'm a very neutral person. So when it comes to this, I'm not like, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that. Like, I'm, you know, like I was a kid, like I still had developmental factors and, and, you know, I'm still developing. I got like maybe a couple more years, (laughs) but, you know, like I'm still, I'm I'm still developing as a person. And, you know, when you're, five six years old it's kind of detrimental like to your psychological mind when you're when you're like you know you're born a girl and you know you know your mom is like well maybe you're a boy and Mm -hmm. you know like that i don't think that's comprehensible like on a serious level when you're that age like and that's when what it comes down to yeah i think you know too like thinking about when that took place just like in the timeline right so the, the years that that happened i guess like two things so one i feel like parents hear this a lot like there's sort of like an instinct that parents have right on like what with their kids so that they may pick up that there's you know something 
you know, different about them, whether they're, you know, they think that they're gay or trans or, you know, whatever it might be, that there's something there. But thinking about, you know, when that was, that was like the, like early to mid like 2000s. And I think part of that is, is that there, there also really wasn't a lot of conversation. There wasn't dialogue. There wasn't talk about it. There weren't, we didn't see trans characters on television shows. We didn't see, there just wasn't a lot of attention around that. And I think, you know, for, you know, for parents or any of us, it, you know, anything that's sort of unknown to us, if you don't have access to information or to people or to a community or a group, it becomes tricky to understand how to navigate it, especially since it sounds like your mom was really wanting to, you know, uh, approach this all with love, right? So it's, I think it becomes tricky for, you know, people. I think today is obviously different. I think it's just because of, you know, a lot of different factors. But that's, I think, part of growing as, you know, a society, growing as a culture, but also, like looking back on it, like knowing she had the foresight or the insight to know that she she knew that there was something there. She just wasn't sure how to approach it. Yeah. And, you know, my grandmother was always like, oh, well, yeah, um, you know, she's just a tomboy. Mac is just a tomboy. Um, you know, he, 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 she was just like me, mm. um, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think it, I knew that it was something more than that mm. because I, you know, didn't really identify as a female. I just want to identify as Mac and no one ever called me by my dead name. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I, my dead name was McKenzie. So it was really easy for the transition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it made it easier for everybody when it came down to that transition, because I just already started expressing myself as, as a guy at a very young age. And it just kind of was like afterwards, more of like the more socially, like getting, it, the ball rolling with everybody else. Mm. Wow. Mac, that's really interesting because there's like a natural fluidity to that, that then people didn't have to put boundaries or walls or anything. Mm. It was almost like it was, it, just as from somebody from the outside of observing, because if we've talk, I've talked to people where with, with a dead name, where it's such a thing, where it's such an issue, where it's like, no, you you have to be go by this name. And just that how that almost, from the outside looking in, that, that it, it almost allowed a smoother way of it for you know and, and i'm sure and i know you've had life has not been smooth obviously but but just understanding that <laughs> developmentally though how important like if somebody was calling me by a different name throughout the day like what that would do to my i don't even honestly know what that would do to my identity to be to be fair the fact that you have been able to identify it as who you are growing up can you explain maybe to some of the listeners like why that's been so important i mean it's important because like this is who i am mm. and you know, I'm I'm a very spiritual person. I I feel like this body is a shell. Mm -hmm. Like this this isn't here. We're not here. It's just all energy, right? And it, I feel like people don't realize that is that if you put out negative energy, you're going to attract negative energy. Mm -hmm. You're going to continue to attract that negative energy. You start looking from the inside out. You start making that positive energy. You start creating yourself as the person that you want to be. Mm -hmm. You start doing things that you want to do that please you and make you happy. And it's it's good. It makes you feel good. It makes your body, body feel good. And that starts really translating outward. Like, I, I mean, I've gotten really deep into this stuff over like the past couple of years because my mental health took a toll because of everything that was happening. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't grasp it that well. I mean, I had a grasp on it, but the fact that I was so young and I was being shielded from everything and I just felt like I had no control and I'm a very controlling person. Mm. I, I, I don't like not having control and I've ha I have, I've had to learn as developing as a person that you're not always going to have control and that's okay. Yeah. But what you can do is continue to talk and have a narrative and keep expressing who you are as an individual. And if someone is not okay with that, that you have in your circle, then you can just boot them right out. Yeah. 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 That's, that's really powerful. The thing that I'm hearing from you is just, is the spiritual desire for honesty. 
Like if I, being honest of like who and what I am as a being, if, if I go to bed at night and, and I know what that is, because I've had times where I, for, for me as being somebody with, who came out three times and was pushed back in the closet three times, right? Like, like, am I, like, am I crazy? Like, like I start like, cause when I started giving more uh, value to the voices outside of me that were then causing me to become almost like my delusional, like that, you know, and then even like some of the arguments that were put on with that, you know, that homosexuality is a mental health issue. Like, you know, we just had last week, you know, the marking in the nineties when that rule, you know, was no longer, it was declassified as a mental health you know, condition. And, but what I've found is, is that once I stopped giving those voices, like you said, that poof, you know, like kind of like out of your circle, you know, that what, what, so much of what's in my mind that I create the world and the life that I have, that which is inside of me becomes my thoughts, become my actions, which become the reality and the life that I live. And then if you choose to participate in that and what we can create together, but if I'm standing, but if I'm not standing in my truth, then my whole barometer, my whole navigation, then is like, what am I doing? Where am I going? And you know, um, yeah, exactly. And that's why people get off the rails, like yeah. because they're not following who they need to be. Yeah. And they, you know, like anything can affect that, like how you're navigating in your path through life. Like there's things that are going to test you that you have to be prepared for mm -hmm. and you have to it's like every day is like a practice yeah, yeah. and it's like if you as soon as you start stepping out of that practice and you start doing things that go off you know the truth of what you need to do in order to create that namaste that like that whole piece of tranquility that you're trying to create for yourself you know you just go off the rails yeah. and that's yeah. what happened to me i mean i mean i'll share because i feel comfortable sharing it now um uh, I was diagnosed with alcoholism because I started turning to the bottle because mm -hmm. I didn't want to deal with the things that were happening to me. And I really had to look within myself. I'm like, this isn't who I am. I'm like, mm -hmm. this, this is, this is crazy. I'm like, I, I'm supposed to be a, someone that people look up to mm -hmm. and I'm doing things that are not only detrimental to me, but detrimental to the people around me. Mm -hmm. And that's what hurt me hurt me the most was the fact that I was hurting other people because I don't want to hurt other people. Mm -hmm. I hate hurting other people. Like that hurts my heart. Yeah. And the fact that I was doing that was just crazy. I had to switch it up real quick. With alcoholism, that it's not really about the alcohol. It's actually about the spirit. It's it, whether it's food, sex, like whatever your your, your thing is, that you're, I'm, whatever it is that I'm reaching outside myself. Whether it's like obviously we all eat and we have sex, like but when I'm starting to use that thing, whether it's alcohol, sex, food shopping, whatever that ism is in my life. That, it's something addictive. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I have found is, is that, is it with my own p personal stuff with that as well too, is that the nine out of 10 times when I would do that was because I was looking for ease and comfort because the pain became too much. And, um, and I remember like, Anthony and I, we were in Chicago walking the dogs and there's this tavern and, um, and I'd walked past it many, many times and it just, it didn't say bar. It didn't say the name of it. It just said spirits. And it opens at 7 a.m. So the people that get off the night shift can come in if they want to. And, and you just, you know, drink in your cups and, you know, your, your sorrows or whatever. And also jubilation. And, and the thing is, is there's, you know, there, some people can, can, can do that. But for me, it got to the point where it's like, wait a minute, I'm using this all the time and I'm not dealing with this pain. And, and, and like you said, like, you know, Anthony and I, we're married now and we've been married now for, for a while, but right about the same time you were going through this stuff in the mid 2000s, he and I were dating and I left, we, we actually, we, we separated because I, I couldn't be around love because I didn't love myself. And that's really hard. That's really hard. I, I, you know, I've damaged a lot of relationships because, you know, I couldn't steer back into the person that I was. Mm. And I, f I feel like it's very hard to find and redirect yourself into that path. I feel like, you know, it's almost like an ego reset, right? Mm -hmm. You, something has to happen to you detrimentally in order for you to for your ego to reset or an intervention. Mm. Yeah. yeah, when you say the, uh, I, I I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that before. Ego reset, and I I think it's all <laughs> like you know for someone like me that I mean, have you ever had an ego death? What's an ego death? <laughs> man, it's crazy. Let me tell you, I've had many ego deaths, man. It's basically just like I mean, your ego is the one that's like it's it's the one that sets. Like your i your ID mm -hmm. and your super ego. Your ID is the one that's like, oh well, I'm gonna you know if someone walks by with the ice cream and you want the ice cream, I'm gonna steal that ice cream. Like I want it. And then your super ego is like, oh no 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 no. Like we can we can we can't do that. We can't do that, man. Like no. Nah. And then your ego is the one that's keeping both of those in check, keeping them in balance. Mm. And so like basically like your ego has gone out got out of whack. It's like 
your your mind, your neurological mindset, mm. like resets, yeah. and it like dies and it's rebirthed, and it's like you're you're a child again. It's mm. like you're you have everything in your mind that's like your brain, your knowledge, and it's still there. Yeah, but like your ego is like. Wait a second. So, you know, it's so funny you say this. Uh, yesterday, so I I think I had one of those days yesterday where I really? sort of reverted and, you know, everything that I know and the knowledge that I have, I had a bad day yesterday. And whether I think, you know, it was a combination of a couple things. There was a lot of external stress coming in, feeling a lot of different, you know, life's pressures. And also yesterday morning, I, you know, I have this morning meditation practice before I get out of bed. I didn't do it yesterday. And actually I haven't done it. I didn't do it for a couple of days. And I think it was this sort of like buildup of a couple different things. And it was almost like a snap. And I think, you know, for, you know, anybody listening, I think that, this happens. And I, like you said, you know, earlier is that you have to figure out like how to get back on track. And, you know, this morning I woke up and I forced myself to make sure that I cleared my head and I had that, you know, that practice. And then I caught myself early on, like getting ready, kind of being in that space. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not having another day like yesterday. So I had to, you know, check myself recalibrate, you know, and, uh, now I'm feeling great and accomplished and, you know, working through my day like I should be. So it's, I, I think that that whole concept, I lo- like, I'm loving that we're talking about this because I feel like anybody, it's very important, totally. And anybody like in any aspect of your life, right? Like sort of like the big spiritual self, like trying to find that piece, but also just like on Tuesday, you know, like I'm having a bad day or like things are going, like it's, it's important to be able to take or know when to take that pause, that time out to do that reset because you don't have to go through an entire day like that. So thank you for, you know, bringing that up. I think that's really important. So it sounds like school is, is, is really treating you well and that you're, 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 you're in a good, you're in a good place. You're, I think you're uh, doing what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> hearing, forget those science classes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I mean, I I just always knew that I was like really like grounded with just like who I was as a person. I knew what I wanted for myself. I mean, I really wish that me and my sister had a more like tighter bond when we were younger. But I mean, I guess I kind of resented her for cutting my hair a couple of times mm. when I was younger. <laughs> and so like my subconscious was like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> 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 uh, but like we, yeah, we got we got a re, we got a rekindled relationship now. She's yeah, like my best friend. That's great. Can, I can can we talk? I, I love the fact that you brought up a resentment with your sister and the relationship because it's it's we talked we were talking we, we've we've taken this turn where we talked about the ego and ego deaths. I was talking to a friend a couple of years ago. He was just basic words, and he was like, resentment or to resent comes from resentar, which means to to refeel, right? And so. Like she cut my hair. Like how many years ago was it that she cut your hair? Like how long ago was that? I was like, I was like five, six years old. Right. I don't know. We were like babies. And, <laughs> and, and, and right. And so like, and, and then it's like, and then it's like years go by and I'm still feeling that haircut from 10 years ago. Right. Like, like <laughs> yeah, my mom always brings it up. <laughs> <laughs> like it brings it up in what sort of a way? Like to like, is it humor or just do the fire or yeah, what? Just as humor. Just yeah. like, and cause like, I mean, I was a baby and I was, I was a baby and she's like only a year younger than me. Right. And uh, I would always steal her passy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, <laughs> so I guess because I stole her passy, she wanted to, my hair. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which, which, this is, this is hilarious. But yet at the same time, it's like, wait a minute, what, what, what put that energy in motion? You know, like, I'm, I, I, I guess it was the fact that, I mean, Maybe she wanted a sister, and I really wasn't like her sister. Like I always want to play video games, uh, uh, played Leapfrog. I don't know if you remember Leapfrog. Yeah. Games. Like you know, fucking. I didn't. I never wanted to play with her dolls. Like I never. I always had like Spider Man. Like if I ever did play dolls with her, it was like Spider Man and Batman. Like uh, that was those were my dolls that I had. So she always did like the thing that really brought us together though was like dancing. And so yeah, we were we were always together doing that. We grew up together doing those types of extracurricular activities except for sports like that was the only thing she didn't do <laughs> mm. which is which is brings up another thing like about expectations because the expectation that you would do girl stuff with her mm. 
it sounds like that there was maybe an expectation f- for that or a little bit of what you just said or no? The, no I, I never felt no pressure from doing it. I mean, like my, like I said, like my family was super easy. Okay. And if we didn't get along, then I mean, we just didn't get along. Uh, <laughs> they yeah. really couldn't figure it out. Uh, I, I, I mean, I guess I would have to like ask them personally one day and be like, hey, that, I mean, why was it that me and her never really got along? Was there something that, you know, and maybe I need to ask my sister, like, you know, did you, I mean, I asked her the question of, did you ever resent me when I transitioned? Like, mm. just that quick. And she was like, no, I, I didn't because I always figured that you were different. I mean, mm. I love you all the same. Like, I, 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 if I had to go to war with anybody, it'd be my sister. Because she, she is a little ball of fury. And let me tell you, she's like 80 pounds, like, <laughs> so she would like literally attack anybody for me. Like she's awesome. Mm. So, well, I'm really glad you've been able to, to, you know, have that relationship. And it's, it's so important to have, uh, I think somebody on your same generation that's in your court, you know, to know that you've got, especially as you're, at least for me, as I'm getting a little bit older, like, and I love, I've lost a couple of grandparents in the last couple of years. And like, it's like, as you feel yourself getting a little bit older, it's like, oh, but I've got my brother here, you know? And, and my, my, my brother and I were like very kind of similar. We, we, uh, my brother was really into like reading and science and I was more like social and, and, and we just, we were like oil and water when we were kids. We would, I mean, there was a couple of times he and I went round and round in the house and, and I remember being like, like my mom or my grandmother being like, I'm so glad that but there was years we were concerned about you too. Mm-hmm. And now like, not like there was an instant where, you know, many years ago where like everything kind of like hit the fan. I mean, did, he cut your, did he cut your hair? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, oh you know what? I cut his hair. Oh. <laughs> so, that was it. It's the cutting of the hair. Yeah, That's yeah. what causes the sibling rivalry uh, right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you nailed it right there. So what, what was really the, you know, after the, you talked about the dancing with the two of you, what was the, um, and I know you've been, you've done so many sports, goalie, you've done basketball, you know, what was the first sport that, after the dancing that kind of took off for you that you got really sinking um, teeth into? It was, re- it was really softball. I mean, I was killer. I was killer catcher our our team called the alley cats like i still have my friends that i still talk to today that you know we were on softball team together mm-hmm. and we were just like talking about like a couple weeks ago actually uh katie katie mitchell and uh she was like hey like we were pretty badass weren't we and i was like hell yeah and i didn't even transition then. <laughs> i was like i was a killer <laughs> i mean i was kind of short i mean i was really short like for being catcher like trying to like chuck like a big old softball all the way to like second base like oh my god but she was like and she was like tall like she was freaking lengthy and she was like it's okay i got i, I had you <laughs> i was like yeah you're funny <laughs> so you hadn't transitioned then you said what were the steps in that for, for you and when did that begin? I think it was more of the fact that I needed to tell people first. I, I felt that that was really important. I felt mm-hmm. that if I was feeling these things, I mean, I already got the clothes down. Like I, I kind of knew how to blend and hide in a way mm-hmm. to where like, you know, never, no one really questioned that. Like, you know, I was a male, but no one, I, people already even questioned me. That was like not female. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't come out, not in anything. They were like, oh, are you this this boy? I'm like, but I'm really a girl. I got to say that because my mom's right there. But like, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, and I was always like, a, I'm a people pleaser, right? And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't want to like my identity to kind of be stolen from me. I didn't want my like, sto- like story hijacked in a way. I didn't want someone to find out that, you know, this was what was really going on. And then if, you know, people started to find out that that's what was really going on, then there'd be talk. I wanted my story to be heard yeah. from my mouth. Yeah. And, you know, if you tell it any other way, then I'm going to be like, ah, no, 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 that's not what I said. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, in some ways, it's like in any sort of like public relations, you know, event, it's like you, you know, a, a PR firm, they, they're always trying to drive the narrative. They, they like get, it's almost like get ahead of the story, get ahead of the chatter, get ahead of like, the control of that so that this way your story is really there. It's very clear yeah. and concise. Yeah. It's, there's no like hiccups. Right. Like to where like someone can be like, oh, well, no, well, some so-and-so said this. I'm like, well, why does so-and-so say that? They mm-hmm. had their name in my mouth because that's not what I said. Right, right, exactly. So you're the one that's controlling the entire narrative. How did you do that? What was the language that you were using to be able to to do that or the tools that you had to do that? 
I, I think it was just like my friend group and the friends that I had were, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say necessarily like the popular kids because I guess they were popular. <laughs> But, like, I was different. Like, I was, like, I listened to Screamo. I wore, like, uh, metal belts, like, my band shirts, uh, skinny jeans, outrageously, like, high, high tops, uh, or, like, sneakers. I was just different. And I think people, I think that's what draws people's attention is the fact that when you're different, people want to know why you're different. Mm -hmm. Like, it intrigues them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and it's the curiosities of, like, questioning, okay, you're doing something different than the rest of this tribe is. And then maybe, maybe inside of us, there's something that actually kind of wants to be, or is attracted to that, or maybe I could do that. Or mm -hmm. you see time and time again with people that have been transphobic, homophobic, or whatever, where you find out that maybe years go by and someone comes out that that was their own issue. Yeah. have you because you mentioned people pleasing and what have you like when you start to go if you if you do you find yourself every now and then if you drift back into that you like tell yourself oh wait 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 like that's like what, what causes that in your own life have you found like is there a, a pattern of like when you go into people pleasing or is it no longer an issue i mean i wouldn't necessarily say that um like i'm trying to people please in a way that is in a way to boost myself in a negative way it's more of an aspect of like kindness and generosity and like giving positivity mm. uh, that that's how i look at you know being a people pleaser in a way that is like i want to be able to show people that i can be that person to go to but also oh. you're not going to take advantage of me that's right there so you're not sacrificing anything in the, in the process of 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 wanting to, it's out of love and it's, it's the good kind of pleasing it's being selfless selfless yeah. instead of self when, well underneath that and that's the thing is with like some of the people i remember when i and i heard about people pleasing and i was like what the person actually said to me was is that jeff you think you're a people pleaser but you're actually manipulating people in this process when it's coming from a selfless place, when it's coming from a selfish place, but when it's selfless, it's love, tolerance, kindness, listening, an ear, my time, you know, multitudes of different ways that that, that can be showing up for, for other people. And at the same time, yeah, and you get rewarded in the end. Mm -hmm. and, and then also the universe my, rewards you. Right. And then my spirit is at ease and comfort. I feel one, I feel connected with you, with others. I'm not, you know, isolated by myself. You know, it's, it's interesting as like, some of these things that we talk about, it's like, I, I hear these things that when we were younger, like to thine own self be true. And th th these, these wisdom traditions that have been around for, for centuries. It's just like, Oh, well we, that this is just, these are the laws of the universe that have been at play for millions of years. And I can choose to participate in them or not participate in them. And then the quality of my life and those around me seems to benefit when I accept that. Yeah. They're, they're noble truths. Like it's something that, you know, you gotta, you get, you gotta practice every single day. You can't, you can't steer from, you know, the path that was created for you, whoever may have created it. You said the word practice. Um, as an athlete, have you been able to see any correspondence in, in, in this in your life the last couple of years? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like like these, these specific things, I, I, I may not be the best. I'm not going to say I'm the best. But I can definitely say I'm pretty top tier over like average and over an average athlete. Like I could go into a center and be able to compete with the top guys mm. or the top girls. And I think everything that I do in my life, like I, I do meditations, I listen to um, chocolate music that, you know, is calming and cleansing and, and, and is cleansing of like the negative energy. And, uh, you know, you see a lot of these top athletes that don't necessarily follow those truths and their body starts, you know, responding in a negative way, mm. you know, uh, whether it be like, you know, their, their back starts, you know, like you start getting arthritis, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, like that's really, you know, something that's not controllable, but it can be controllable if you're able to stop it when it needs to be stopped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also like, you know, not pushing yourself too hard to where you have like these injuries that, you know, put you out, you know, for the rest of your life and you're not able to compete. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, it's all like time management, it's time, it's patience, um, and patience is really key. And you got, and you got to know when, you know, your body is telling you like, Hey, you need to like, you know, take a time out. And, um, that's really hard when, you know, people are around you, you know, on like a time crunch mm. and you got like limited time. 
like for instance, uh, I, I, the reason why I retired was because I, I don't want to use the rest of my years. I, I don't want to, like, I could probably go back to wrestling if I want to. I still got like a year, a year or two, and I can choose so when I can to go back when I want to. But I had to make the choice in order to what's best for me now, what's mm-hmm. going to, in the long run, prolong my life and, you know, to live happy and to, you know, keep that happiness mm-hmm. and, you know, and follow those no and following those noble truths is what is going to be key and having that happiness that I will forever have. Mm. That sounds like almost like following like intuition, right? So following like that little voice in your head when it's like, you know, when it's time to make a change or, you know, it's the right thing to do or not the right thing to do. How do you take that guidance or where does that come from? Yeah, I'm just going to be honest. Like it's really just have been just myself and, Mm. you know, people like honestly that aren't even in my life anymore that mm-hmm. have taught me these things, which is really weird. It's really weird that um, there's these people that teach me these practices, mm-hmm. but they practice it, but they can't seem to follow it and get it right, you know? Mm. And and I had to cut them out because I, I, don't, I don't know, like maybe they're just, they're, it's not their time yet. They're just not ready. There's other things going on in their life, which I, I always, whenever I leave somebody's life and departure, I'm just like, you know what? I give you the best, but I can't have this in my life. Yeah. Like I, I have to be the bigger person. Yeah. You know, like there's, you know, people, uh, there's like that old saying, it's like, you know, there's some people that are in your life for your whole life. And there's just some people that come in for a season. There's some people who come in just for, you know, a, an extended period of time. And I think, looking back, you know, relationships that I've had with, you know, different people over the years. And it's like, they either taught me something or they were able to expose me to something new or different that sort of led me down a path. And, you know, hopefully I was able to do that for them as well, you know, give them something back in return. And I think that, you know, this is important to talk about because I feel like sometimes people have this like idea that you have to like garner and hold on to these relationships and it's maybe not serving you to the best ability. It's maybe not serving them to the best ability, but there's like maybe like this social pressure of not, you know, making someone mad or not living up to that social, whatever those societal like uh, constructs are, you know, based around that. So I, I think it's important to remember that, you know, sometimes we're here with people, you know, you're supposed to be with people for, you know, a short time and there's other people that, you know, they're lifers, they'll be with you forever. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. Oh, yes. I mean, I know it's cliche, but everything does happen for a reason. Whether it's something that you created or it's something that others have created. If I can have acceptance for that and then I can respond instead of like react to somebody else's thought or because when I'm reacting, it's like I'm like literally like, you know, that, you know, I cut their hair, you know, or they cut my hair and then I react like that was done to me. I can respond. I can be like, um, please don't, don't do that. Or, you know, I, I like it better when you cut my hair like this or that, you know, like whatever it is. As boundaries you set for yourself as an individual. Mm, yeah. You yeah, know, right. like I have certain things that I don't tolerate. Um, there's, you know, everybody's different with like their boundaries and what they're okay with. And, I, and then this is what I think about when it comes to like keeping people in your life. It's how, how far are you willing to go in order to be okay with your boundaries being pushed Mm. and is there something that keeps grounding you back to that this is why i keep them in my life like this is why they're still here and i think that's important when it comes to like you know family members you know your friends your acquaintances the people you have at work uh your your spouse soulmates like I, i believe in soulmates i believe in like you know twin flame like, I believe that my girlfriend likes to talk about this. We're really big in um, theology. And she talks about, we were talking about this yesterday. We were talking about Zeus and how he had, you know, sex with, yeah, Aphrodite. And uh, they had a kid. The kid was, Zeus was so jealous of how perfect the child was and how, like, the relationships that it had, two, uh, the individual had two heads, two arms, and two legs. And he, and he split the child at birth to where they had to walk the earth forever time in order to find each other. And I thought that was like, I, I did not know that story. And she was, I was like, what? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that story before. Thank you for sharing that with us. I see how figuring some of this stuff out has benefited your, your, your spiritual condition. And 
I think maybe to some people that maybe have been in a place now where they have people in their lives that are maybe not the healthiest relationships. When I've talked to some people, when I've worked with this with myself, I found myself years ago where I was talking to somebody regularly, kind of like a psychologist or somebody, kind of like a mentor. And, um, and I would come back and I'd be like, oh, my friend, he or she or they are, are doing this to me. And I always say, my friend. And my, and, and my, my mentor said to me, he goes, well, you know, you've, you've come back to me. We've, we've talked about this about three or four weeks now in a row. And you keep saying my friend, well, let's look up the definition of the word friend. Right. Or, you know, and, and it's like your subconscious is telling you, I don't need this friend. Like this friend is like negative. Right. Like we have these instincts, intuition that like, oh, this is hurting me. So step away from the flame, you know, or this is burning me. But then it's like it'd be like if I had my hand over the flame in, in the kitchen and be like, oh, but it's my friend. No, it's burning. You get your hand off the flame and go find some new friends. <laughs> I definitely agree. Yeah. yeah. I had some friends who were like that. I actually recently, um, I was giving him the benefit of the doubt for a long time because he doesn't quite understand a lot of things. And he was doing a lot of things recreationally that I did not support anymore. And then he was, I felt like he was taking advantage of me in a sense mm. that with all these opportunities that I had in place that, you know, he came down here one time, you know, to spend time with me with no money and was expecting me to pay for all of his things. I was like, dude, we're not in high school anymore. Like, I'm not going to let you take advantage of me like that. Like we're grown ass men. Like you got to start taking care of you. You got, you know, two kids and apparently got another one coming on the way. Like this, this is not good, bro. I was like, what, what are you doing with, with your life, man? Like, you got a, you need a reality check. And he like scratched my girlfriend's car and um, I was uh, and I asked him to pay for it. And he was like, Oh no, you're asking me for too much money. I'm like, dude, paint jobs, like $50 labor, another 50. And that's like giving it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, dude, like you gotta go, man. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you can't be on this, like this high that I got. Like I can't allow you to be on this level with me anymore. Yeah. Like it's, it it can't be done. It's like riding on your coattails. Right. And it's like, it's almost like then people then drain your energy. They, and hold you back. And then you can't really flourish and blossom and do what it is that you're supposed to be doing in order to, you know, make the change in the world that you were put here to do. So it's, it's important to like identify those things when like that, the relationships turn like that. It's like there, there really is no reason, uh, to hold on to that if it's not serving, you know, both people within that relationship, whatever that relationship is, yeah. friendship, romantic, yeah, whatever. 100%. Yeah, hundred percent. And I got to be blessed with like what's put in front of me and yeah. I can't, I, I can't deteriorate from the path that's been created for me and that's I, that I've created for myself. Yeah. Especially with like, you know, changing the game and all these interviews and people like wanting to talk to me and you know, I, I got no time to be like, you know, messing up my life with like activities that, you know, people are going to put me in like a, in a position that's going to essentially ruin my life or in a sense, like ruin somebody else's life or damage a relationship that I cherish, um, you know, very close to me. Like, I, I can't allow that. Like, I, my spirit will not allow that. Like, my energy is more, like, more, my energy is more than my body. Mm. There's a song called Body, which I, I highly recommend. I can't remember who the artist is, but it it's like speaks to me every time every time I listen to it and it's like, um, I'm more than my body. Mm. And it's just kind of like, I get tingles. Oh, just talking about it. It's like, oh, like. <laughs> the, so you mentioned changing the game. Changing the game is a documentary, uh, that was directed by Michael Barnett, I believe. Yes. And, and it follows, uh, yourself, uh, Sarah Rose Huckman and Terry Miller. This and Andre Yearwood. Perfect. Thank you. So when was that filmed? That, that was a uh, film. We started, I think we started filming in 2017. 2018 mm. yeah 20 2017 because it was my junior year we started talking then and um like we actually had a few meetups before we even started filming because i was like well i know this is all great and all like me 17 years old i was like oh my god there's gonna be a whole camera in front of me this is crazy <laughs> man um <laughs> and uh, my family was like oh my god my baby like we gotta make sure like these like people aren't gonna hurt you and I had no idea that even then, like Chris Moiser was one of like uh, the people that were funding this, and um, Alex, uh, uh, part of Glad, a uh, fucking amazing guy, man. Like these people are like people that I still talk to every single day. Mm. Like just, just I'm blessed, man. I'm fucking blessed. <laughs> 
So can you give us maybe just like a little synopsis of what the documentary is all about? Yeah. Uh, Changing the Game is about um, four, and four, including myself, trans athletes going through our trials and, you know, daily things in life, bringing up social institutions, talking about the struggles and barriers that we had to go through. I ain't going to give anything away, but that's the gist of what I'm going to give though. No, that's a great gist. That's, that's really good. You know, going through that process of, you know, just the, the filming and, you know, all of that, was there any, you know, aha moments or any sort of like big life lessons that you learned, like going through the process of being a part of uh, the documentary? I, I remember, I remember two aha moments. I remember an aha, an aha moment when it was actually, it's actually during the first part of the film, um, we were, they were filming it. I think we were doing like a shoot, like to do like a little run of like a practice that I do. Mm. And given that day when we did that last shot, I already practiced like five or six hours that day. Mm. And so I did seven to eight hours of training that day. I was like whipped. Wow. And I remember because um, I think I had like an injury. I, I think I actually damaged my one of my vertebrae and like pinched one of my nerves because I actually a couple weeks before that I got thrown on my head during a freestyle match mm. and like I was I had like to go to like the doctor I had to get like an ultrasound it, it was crazy man mm. but I had like an aha moment then I was like if I want to do these things I'm gonna have to push myself in order to be the best version of myself mm. Mm. And then there was another one. There was a time when it was just like these little moments of like when Michael was like pushing me to like, you know, go like through one of like the when they were filming and I was just like dead. Like I didn't want to do anything. Like this was like at the end of the day when I had time, it was not during school, it wasn't during practice because like my coach was like, oh, no, 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 can do it. Because <laughs> my school wouldn't have let any of the any of the film filmers and Michael uh, to come film me during school, during practice, mm. they weren't allowed. It. And I was just kind of like having those aha moments of like, oh, well, haha, like, I guess you're not as diverse or you're not as inclusive as I thought because you can allow like ESPN to come shoot the football team, but you can't allow, you know, somebody filming, you know, a trans athlete mm. in the wrestling room. That's kind of like, little sus to me, guys. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, like, definitely some aha. For sure. You know, it's listening to you, you know, like working through like some of these things that happen. It's, I think, so important as we're going through life and as we're going through like sort of like exciting times and fun things, you know, that are happening to us that as we're going through the process, it's listening to you. What I'm reminding myself is, is that you really have to pay attention to what it is that you're learning from that experience, right? So, because I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, things happen to us and things happen in our lives that we were, were given or we want, and we sort of get caught up in the, oh my gosh, I'm doing this thing. And then not really realizing or being able to fully be present while the thing is happening so that you can learn those lessons that you were supposed to learn. That's why you were brought there in the first place. So it's a good reminder to, you know, be able to fully be present in life and any time that that happens. I did want to say that uh, a variety review of the movie said it's a must see, especially for any uninformed parent raising a transgender athlete. Really, they're just kids growing into their voice, asking for a dignified adolescence they are worthy of. Reading that, that's a very powerful, you know, review of of the film. Did you feel uh, going through this process of uh, creating the film that you were just looking for t to be identified or the di having dignity within your adolescence as you were going through this process? I not necessarily. I I knew I had dignity, um, and that's just from being a very uh, constructive person in my life and being very independent. Yeah. I always knew no matter what I did, no matter what I chose, um, I was going to be great at whatever I did. Mm. And I, and just from like, you know, just from a very spiritual mindset, I don't need many things. I don't need my story amplified in order to have recognition of who I am as a person. Mm. The reason why I amplify my story is because of these kids mm -hmm. and because I don't want any other kid or adult or anybody to go through what I went through. Mm. And that's, comes from you know being selfless is the fact that i share these experiences because 
I hope somebody, you know, takes it and runs with it and is able to learn something from it. Yeah. Mac, you had a, uh a couple of weeks ago on Instagram where I think there was like a shadow ban. And then you, afterwards you talked about it in a very mature, uh, selfless way. You know, someone had said some things that w- were not nice to you, obviously it was the context. And you talked about how you maybe had responded, but at the end of the day, it was like, you know what, le- these distractions, we just can't have these, these little things, these distractions, your, your wisdom shine through from that instant. And, and you were like, you know what, this is what I'm here to do. I'm, I'm here to accomplish this. Don't let these things, and, but you were also humble to the fact of like, you know what, Maybe I shouldn't have responded like this. Mm-hmm. Where anyone, where, 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 like if you were like in, a, in an arena, the audience would be like, no, get them, right? Like get them. <laughs> but you've got this wisdom, this, this wisdom that, and, 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 and it's just, it's so. Well, it's a waste of my energy. Yeah, uh, there you yeah. go. And right. my, my girlfriend always brings me down to it and is always reminding me. And she always has to catch me because I, I still catch myself doing it. You know, these little idiot commenters that are just like, Oh, well, you're you're not a male. You're female. You're biologically formed. Oh, you you only won because you took testosterone. I'm like, I'm still able to like you know, like catch hands from like my instructor that I have that I am in Alabama right now. That's like has like belts under his hand and we have fun going at each other. Like I'm not some like average athlete, guys. Like I've been I went to state four times. Right. I you know, succeeded in softball. I, you know, wasn't really good at pole ball. Okay. I'm not good at launching myself for a pole. I'll admit that. Um, but you know, when it comes to combat and, you know, like being like, I guess using my body in, in an expensive way, like I'm very useful in that mm-hmm. and I'm very strategic in a way. So like, I don't know, like I just have to, she reminds me that you can't, you can't be responding to these people just mm-hmm. blocking the lead. Right. Yeah. Block and delete. Delete. I, like, right. Yeah. That's, a, yeah, that's like a great motto. Block and delete the, the big BD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because then, because then you know when I'm able to go back to my, being who I am and who I who I want to be or, or what I'm becoming, then people continue to have authentic experiences with that person. Otherwise, they're having experiences with this person who's responding to this flea or this mosquito mm-hmm. over here that's getting hit by accident when I'm trying to swap the flea away from me, you know, or the, the mosquito. Mm-hmm. You know, Mac, it's been really wonderful to be able to sit and have like this conversation. And, and honestly, like we talked about some things that going into this, like I, I didn't know we were going to come up and I'm actually so glad that they yeah, did. I didn't either. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm glad we, I'm yeah. glad we did. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome having these conversations, yeah. like, you know, changing the narrative, bringing up things that people don't even, you know, don't even know about every single day. And, you know, it's, it's literally right in front of them. It's tools. Mm-hmm. Like, it's literally like you are the tool. Your body is expensive. Yeah. Like, yeah. use it. Yeah. 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 You have this quote and it said, nobody believes it when they're younger, but life gets better. You have to manifest what you want in life. You can't let people get you down because at the end of the day, you have yourself. And period. Period. Like let me offer off the non berry LGBT motherfucking. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, that mic is dropped. All the queer folks is like. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to drop your mic. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that old thing, like, be yourself, because everybody else is already taken, you know? So uh, we're so glad that, that you are yourself, and thank you so much for spending some time with us today and getting to know you better. We're really excited for what the future holds and, and just all the wonderful things that you're accomplishing in your life, Max. So have a wonderful... Yeah, it's been awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I, I'm truly blessed. Y'all are one of the blessings that, you know, like I put in my life. So uh, we, just thank you. We feel the same way. We really appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to create this conversation with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Standing in your truth and being who you are is just one of the wise lessons we can learn from Mac. Not only has he stood in his own truth, he's now using the platform he's created to help other teens go through what he went through as a teenager. To learn more about Mac, you can visit his profile page on our website at www.talkoutloudlive.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Talk Out Loud. If you're enjoying the show, please subscribe, rate us, and share with a friend. You can also follow us on social media at Talk Out Loud Live. To catch up on past episodes and learn more about our past guests, visit our website at www.talkoutloudlive.com. You can also get your official Talk Out Loud gear in our online store 
and browse our online bookstore curated with our guests' recommended books. Thanks again for listening, and remember, be true, be you, and to talk out loud.